Hi brothers and sisters, it's Rhonda. I hope you're doing well. I was studying this morning and I'm in 2 Kings chapter 4 and the passage that I was reading, it, it just spoke to my heart and I want to share it with you. There's so much here. There's so much in God's word. Now a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead and you know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels at large for yourself from all your neighbors, even empty vessels, do not get a few and you shall go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour out into all these vessels and you shall set aside what is full. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They were bringing the vessels to her and she poured. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not one vessel more. And the oil stopped. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go and sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons can live on the rest. Isn't our Lord good? You know, sometimes things happen, and they seem dire and hopeless. And sometimes we don't see a way out. And here's a woman who no doubt served the Lord faithfully alongside her husband. Her husband is taken and, and the security that she knew with him is gone now. And now a time of testing begins. We know when this happens, we can rest assured that the enemy is right there waiting to seize the moment and try and cause us to lose our faith. And here comes the creditor has come to take her sons away as slaves. And what does she do? What do we do when we're faced with uncertainty and calamity? This woman knew that her help comes from the Lord. And she called on the prophet of God, Elisha, referring to herself as a maidservant. That's significant. H. 8198, a female slave as a member of the household age 4940, a handmaiden of the Lord. He asks her what she has in the house, and she tells him what she has. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 not to worry, and he teaches us to seek for his Father's kingdom and his righteousness, and he'll take care of us. But I need to add also that sometimes we're allowed to suffer but it isn't because our Father doesn't love us. It isn't because He doesn't care. Look at Joseph, for example, and, and the suffering that he endured. But it was for Father's good purpose. It was for something far greater than what Joseph could see at the time. So no matter what, let us first seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And let us go to the Father in prayer. And then we wait on Him and we trust Him with all of our heart, and we don't lean on it for our own understanding. In all our ways, we acknowledge Him. In every thought that we have, in every word that we speak, and everything that we do, we acknowledge Him, we acknowledge His sovereignty, and He'll direct our path. We obey Him, and we give Him thanks in all circumstances. Not just some, all circumstances, even through your tears, even through your uncertainty, even when things don't go the way that we hope they will. Not our will, Father, but yours. He'll never leave us or forsake us. And we can be at perfect peace even when the walls are caving in around us. And we can do it because we keep our mind stayed on Him. Why? 
because we trust in him. We trust in him. He's a good father and he loves us. Stay the course. Keep your eyes on him. Don't look to the right or to the left. I love you.